Can I heckle your intro? You you yes. absolutely okay. can heckle our intro because this is the Four Mile Circus podcast, a podcast from Four Mile Circus, um, independent media services uh, company in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, uh, my name is Sean Mannion, uh, and I'm half of Four Mile Circus and one of the two hosts miles. of the podcast. Two miles? Two miles of the Four Mile Circus. I'm two miles of the two mi- <laughs> fi- Four Mile Circus. <laughs> Uh, it remains to be seen whether or not I'm the first two miles or the last two miles. But <laughs> what if you're in the uh, middle? Oh my god! Oh, Weird. Poof, mind blown. Or what if like it's like distributed in like quarter mile segments? Yeah. What? Shit. And then this is my partner. Right. Hi. Um, I'm Nicole Solomon. I'm two other miles mm, she's distributor. The other, she's <laughs> the other baton. Yes. <laughs> Just like <laughs> bah, pass it on. <laughs> yes, that's me. <laughs> and uh, today we're talking with uh, Lisa uh, Hammer and Levi Wilson of Lisa Hammer and Levi Wilson and like a million projects, including uh, bands and web series and stage plays. And uh, I think they live together. So there's a whole other project there. In full sin. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Full <laughs> sin. Mm, Some maximum sin. by the church, though. <laughs> but I think the wrong church, so... <laughs> Church of Satan. Uh, and before we talk to them, though, Nicole, do you have a tip as we were discussing? Right. I do just, have just a tip. I, I do have just 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 the one tip. That's getting weird now. Um, <laughs> it's about crowdfunding. Ah. Yes. Oh wait, I want to take notes. Please, yeah. please take notes because it's we aren't recording this for posterity to you know Posterior. that you could listen to later he's not gonna listen yeah that's true you're not gonna right, listen right. so take notes please because this is <laughs> this is gonna be life-changing um when you are planning your crowdfunding campaign when you're planning your incentives a good thing to think about is maybe making some of your incentives things that can be delivered while your campaign is still going on that will help promote your campaign The most easy and common example of this is like a lot of people, one of the incentives they'll give backers is a social media thank you. A lot of times that'll be like the lowest level of giving if people only give like a dollar or maybe five dollars. You might not get anything else, but you'll get a thank you on social media. You'll tweet out, you know, thank you to Sean Mannion for contributing to my crowdfunding campaign. I'm not contributing to your crowdfunding campaign. I, I know. That's not, that's, that's just, it's, don't ask me. Stop sending me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> what if we sweeten the deal? <laughs> Maybe you guys have crowdfunding tips you'd like to Oh share. my God. Whiskey. Yeah, that's expensive though. So oh, right. the thing, the, another thing about incentives is you got a budget for them. So whiskey's going to be out of the budget. But a thank you on on social media is probably within the budget. And the cool thing about that is, Especially if you say something clever in it or attach an image maybe of something, people will tend to share it. And so then it serves as like another little ad for your crowdfunding campaign or note, be clever. Yeah, mm. I'm, it's it's mm. the, some of us. Some of us can can do that. Others of us have a little more a little more difficulty with the cleverness. So if you can't be clever, be uh, grateful and nice or hire somebody else to be clever for you. You know, and like make a clever gif or something. Um, but another example of this is Sean Mannion, for example, with his short film Time Signature. One of his incentives was he would make backers travel back in time to anywhere they wanted to go, but not really, just through the power of Photoshop. Oh. And bet you didn't know that you can time travel through Photoshop. Kind of not really. Yeah, you That's too true, could yeah. be at. Uh moon landing that was a popular one um battle of thermopylae uh how about uh november of 2016 and convince people not to vote for jill stein (laughs) (laughs) i can't do the impossible i can get you to november 2016 i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure you could you can't accomplish that one if this were live, you'd be getting telephone calls right now. <laughs> oh, the lines are lighting up. If if people listened and yeah, we were live. See, they it would listen be again. You go back and they would still not listen. Yes. <laughs> not listening is the common denominator here. Um, so, yeah, so manage expectations with your Photoshop time traveling. But 
Point being, if you have an incentive that is something like that, that you can produce quickly and cheaply and get out to people while your campaign's still going on, that they will want to share, like an image of themselves with Amelia Earhart or whatever. Um, like some of the ones Sean did, he because Sean is pretty quick with Photoshopping, he'd slap those together, send them off to his backers, and they'd be like, oh my God, it's me and Amelia Earhart. I'm going to put this on the Facebook and the Twitter and everything and, you know... I got this for contributing to the time signature campaign. And then other people are like, oh, man, I want to hang out with Amelia Earhart in a Photoshop JPEG, too. And it, and it genuinely did get people like you wouldn't you would think like, oh, I don't know if that would necessarily like get people to donate. No, there are people who donated like in the first week or two after they saw something like that, who normally would have been like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'll do it at the end. Or they were going to forget about it. And there were a couple of people who. I would not have expected to do it at all. Mm. Who ended up doing it because they're like, I want to do this thing. Yeah. And then you can honor their wishes as far as who, where they want to be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He let people, <laughs> and let I, people choose. Yeah. And I would turn it around within a couple of days, yeah, you usually. Gotta, you got to get people who want to participate, and that's a way to do it. Yeah. 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 And and it doesn't, you know, probably don't do the exact same thing Sean Mannion did of like, hey, I am also going to have you time travel through Photoshop. But, you know, you could put people, you know, you can Photoshop them into <laughs> other scenarios. Right. That's a um, great idea. It, it it's also helpful to remember that like that was genuinely very quick for me to do. I have twenty years of using Photoshop, so I can make that. I can put you into an old photo in mm -hmm. half an hour, yeah. and I mean it won't look amazing, but it'll be passable. Mm -hmm. So do something. But do something that's you know like if you're a a poet, like put together a, a a dirty limerick about your backer if that's a thing they want. If that's not a thing they want, that's probably not a Entitled good thing to do. Just a tip. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> These are great ideas. I'm stealing them. Please. That's that's why we're here. We're here to promote theft. Um, and yeah, or, or whatever it is, write, write a short story, you know, take a photo of your cat next saying like, you know, Marv, thanks, Levi Wilson for, you know. For your five dollars. Exactly. Or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Think of something that is quick and easy and extremely cheap for you to do that can be disseminated because <laughs> mm. inseminated I know now. oh wait i got <laughs> in a steady stream <laughs> not to put too fine a point on it protein <laughs> i think our listeners get what i'm saying I, I, a quick and easy thing for a you to oh they get it all right <laughs> they're getting it real hard <laughs> And that's my crowdfunding tip for the episode. <laughs> I love it. I'm doing it. I'm stealing it. That was just a tip with Nicole. <laughs> Wait, maybe we, we should call, we should it, call it just a tip. Because yeah. just the tip would it's be too, too obvious. Too obvious, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And subtlety is obviously our trademark. <laughs> Definitely. We're very subtle. <laughs> what with us? What? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> that was my... <laughs> so, okay. So... So we uh, talked a little bit about who you guys are, but wh why don't you uh, introduce yourselves for our clueless listener listeners as to who are these Lisa and Levi and why do we give a shit? I don't know why you would give a shit, but <laughs> I am Lisa Hammer. I, I do the voice of Triana Orpheus on the Venture Brothers. I was in a bunch of cool goth bands since the 80s that played in Boston and New York. Uh, Requiem and White and More Syphilitica. I'm now in the band Radiana. And we do a show about Radiana called Maybe Sunshine, which is on the web. And I've made a film with Eve Plum and Lisa Ferber and Levi Wilson called The Sisters Plots, which is looking for distribution. And what else? Um, oh, we're doing a play. <laughs> I don't know. That was our elevator pitch. That's my elevator <laughs> pitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, me. And what does Levi do? <laughs> Uh, I assist Lisa Hammer in all of those things. <laughs> oh, please, you do your own things. <laughs> do I? What was the thing that I do? I don't even know half the time. I just, I'm just like in the. Do you want me to do your elevator pitch? Yeah, do my elevator pitch. Levi Wilson is a has a bachelor's degree See, in theater know, arts and <laughs> is an actor, writer, director, editor, guitar player, and martial artist who acts in my films and then directs me in the show is in the band and i'm directing him in the play right that that reminds me uh, sort of sort of important you're uh you're you're a villain in the teenage mutant ninja turtles movie aren't you 
Oh yeah, I did yeah. some stuff for. But you know, they Which, got rid you know, of all the all it, that. It, they, important to me is I grew up with the Ninja Turtles. They were so very important I, as I was a child. I was a foot soldier, and uh, <laughs> um, but the here's the funny part is that we spent like three months shooting that, and uh, and it was really fun. And then when you know a few of us got together to watch the movie, we were like, "Yeah, movie! We're in. We're foot soldiers," and like all of everything was redone, and it was all like CG foot soldiers getting beaten up. And I was like, "Oh, all right. Well, that's cool." <laughs> they didn't even like motion track you guys or something. No, they didn't. It was ridiculous. It was but literally like it was like just camp, floppy. Though. Yeah, we we did a like a this boot camp like two day boot camp with this uh with uh, this guy who's like a an ex military guy who like consults with military things and like we just ran through like drills and like weapons training and stuff it was pretty crazy weapons training yeah for okay yeah because these these were like different foot soldiers they were like well initially they started out as like terrorists not like martial arts foot soldiers but like foot soldiers that like had guns and so we had to like learn how to like muzzle etiquette and all this stuff and like you know how to like <laughs> muzzle etiquette yeah it's like or muzzle discipline sorry that's what it was <laughs> that's, uh, that's like what she muzzle asked it. for exactly <laughs> <laughs> muzzle etiquette <laughs> muzzle discipline <laughs> they're both good and like uh. and like I mean it was it was it was a lot of fun and then uh, it was one of those things where it's like they filmed like three times as much movie as they used so yep. we ended up doing a lot of stuff that they didn't use at all so you know there were scenes that were like redone and like they shot whole, uh, an entire ending that didn't get used it was yeah. was it better than the ending that they had i mean i enjoyed the movie it wasn't a good movie but i enjoyed it but oh i enjoyed it was a little eh. you know it's hard to say it's hard to say i you know i i miss yeah it yeah this is like god how long ago this was like three four years ago it was a while ago it was yeah. a while ago so it was, the ending was like, I want to say it was something like, uh, what's his name? Uh, William Fickner. Yeah, William Fickner, who, who was originally supposed to be the Shredder, right? right. But as, the, as that leaked out, everybody was like, why is he the Shredder? He's supposed to be a Japanese dude. So they like basically, so you notice in the movie where they like, all of the disem like the the disembodied scenes with the shredder, which they just kind of <laughs> popped in some Japanese guy, you know, with William Fickner and like what was Fincher? It's Fi it's Fickner. Fickner, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, and uh, but it just seemed to kind of like be interspliced like disembodied scenes. It's you know in like a yeah. weird unnamed room that doesn't not in anywhere, never established. Yeah, because. That didn't exist before, so he, they basically just like threw that in there and like made him like the Shredder, the Japanese guy, and William Fickner was just going to be like his weird, like you know, assistant white guy. And then, because what happens at the end is, is like Fickner takes like a drink of like some mutagen, right? Okay. And uh, just becomes this crazy huge super Shredder, and then that's the final battle in the movie, right? Huh. Because, like, the, you know, this entire, like, lab explodes and he jumps out and the turtles have to go after him. Filmed, all of that was filmed. There was a huge fight scene with, like, all the, with all the foot soldiers and everything. And, like, Will Arnett is, like, fighting foot soldiers and winning. And I'm like, really? All right. <laughs> well, we're doing this. Um, but that didn't make it into the movie. None of that did. Huh. And, um, and it just turned into, like, hey, we just happen to have a super shredder here. They forgot to take the camera lens off. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. cover of the oh, lens. Son of a. <laughs> the cover of the lens. It wasn't. They weren't even reacting to to the backlash, right. which, I mean, I didn't voice a whole lot at the time. But when I heard, like, I'm, like as much as I love William Fickner, I'm a big fan of his. And I was like, okay, but yeah, like the Shredder's Japanese. Yeah. Don't don't do yeah. don't do that. Let's guys. just yeah. Like, it it's yeah. That's still kind of like that must have been it. They were just like it, they weren't really reacting to it. They were just like shit, guys. We left the, left the lens cap on. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> For like three days. <laughs> Why didn't anybody notice? Three weeks. <laughs> three weeks. Three weeks of shooting oh, that That's hilarious. Goodness. So, so you're uh, you're uh, almost star of the Ninja Turtles movie, <laughs> and uh, you guys do uh, band Even if stuff. I was in there, I wouldn't be the star. <laughs> the foot soldiers. Come yeah. on, we all know the foot soldiers are the stars <laughs> exactly. of anything. I mean, I'm still disappointed that they weren't robots in the movie, but that's that's a whole <laughs> other thing. <laughs> Um, 
but uh, so uh, lots of different sort of uh, projects, whether it's uh, films or um, you know TV shows and all that. Um, all of them require an audience. How do you guys like get people to watch or listen to any to whatever the hell you're doing? <laughs> well, it's it's tough. Yeah, it's really tough. Um, you would think, you know, I've get comments on my YouTube page like, "This is Triana Orpheus's page. She should have ten thousand followers." I'm like, I barely paid attention to my YouTube page until like last year. <laughs> I didn't even care. I didn't try. I was uploading things maybe once every three years, and then I went to YouTube Camp. <laughs> Which is a which Chelsea they market. They have like all these classes. If you have over five hundred, huh. over five hundred uh, subscribers, right, right. you get to go to YouTube class. And then I was like, all right, if we're gonna do this web series, maybe Sunshine, I need to go to this class so we can like up our viewership. And they had a lot of great tips. Um, I can't go over all of them. There's too many. But um, basically, we combine Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube and just this sort of circle jerk <laughs> like <laughs> constantly. And then everybody who's involved, we ask them to retweet. Um, and I just get new subscribers every day from just people retweeting a link of a video of maybe one of the episodes or a music video from the band. So I try to appeal to each different kind of viewer. I might have the old goth kids, and then I might have people who like to watch comedy so I try to appeal to everybody and like rotate my uploads that to different subjects. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying something different this year um, because I think I've come to the conclusion on a very cynical level that uh, um, you kind of have to be famous to have a successful um, social media marketing ability, right? So you you have to start with the fame. So so it's kind of weird. Like obviously there's a very small like vanishingly small minority of people um who were able to kind of appear at the on like the initial onset of like youtube you know and things like that um that were able to like gain you know some sort of like uh what like leslie and the lies kind of fame where like yeah. they just kind of showed up and people were like this is crazy but there's nothing else so suddenly everyone's watching yep. it because you know, yeah. but now that everyone is doing that, um, that's the difficulty is that now, you know, we're at a point of extreme democratization of, of like social media access, uh, mm -hmm. so that how do you sift through yeah. all of that? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. 10 years ago, I uploaded one of my films called period piece and it's really shocking and gross and funny and, and like psychedelic, but nobody else, I mean, there were like five videos on YouTube, so I got 76,000 hits. But, you know, after everybody started uploading and so many people are on YouTube now, I get, if I get a thousand hits now on something, I'm lucky. Which is not, even like a thousand hits just from like an initial upload of something is like a pretty, it's kind of a decent haul since a lot of times like you, you'll look through, if you look into like deep YouTube where people are getting like, you know, 17 hits. That's like, I feel like that's the average, right? <laughs> yeah, For the sure. averages are not that like high. And yeah. we all fixate a little bit on like millions of hits. Right. These yeah. people got millions of hits. Well, most of them got million, millions of hits like months ago. Right. Or there's, a, like you said, there's a famous person. Mm -hmm. Or a marketing firm. A marketing, a marketing firm. firm. Finding that out more and more that some of these like, you know, self-made YouTube uh, stars are just part of a marketing arm. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of it is, yeah. Yeah, which goes right back to my thesis that you kind of already have to be famous. Or have right? a machine built in. Or have, yeah, yeah, but if you're famous, you have, the machine is built in, right? Right, right. So. There's already people who are doing it. Exactly. It's that whole thing. It, uh, I I haven't dealt with publicists on a personal level, but I have several connections that have been dealing with them, particularly in the last year, including uh, for two, actually both the people I'm thinking of are former guests. Uh, the show, publicists seem to mostly just be useful for, like, if pe everybody's already interested in you. Right. Like, that seems to be it. They're like, oh, like, they can't get you into or do anything for you. I'm nodding my head. That you probably <laughs> couldn't have done for yourself if you just had the right connection. Like, if right. you can't get into Rolling Stone today because nobody gives a shit about you. 
The public you just can't help you. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. They're not going to magically make that shit happen. Mm. Unless they're really invested in you for some reason and, like, people owe them favors and they've kind of decided, like, but that usually involves having, <clears throat> like, a major label's money behind you right. or something right. like that. Because like, you, all right, you're yeah. going to be the next something. Like, right. we are going. Right. And then... You have that kind of... Um... And one way to make them extremely invested in you is by paying them a lot of money. <laughs> That's the right? catch-22. <laughs> so... For a certain amount of money, I've been told by several publicists, we can get you on the Today Show for this level of money. Okay, and right, then, right. you know, even with getting your movie on Netflix, there's a company that'll do it for $9,000. And maybe you'll get picked and maybe you won't. You know, it, wow. there's, there's yeah. pay to play in every department. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to just have the cash. Yeah. So anyway, my, yeah. my, my new, on a positive note, um, my new thing for 2017 is to try to, is to forego um, trying to get followers through just being on social media and like, you know, hashtag storms and stuff like that. And just minimalizing my exposure to social media in general, um, just for my own psyche, because it's really stupid right now. And, uh, like, I mean, come on, everybody. Like, we all know Trump's an asshole. I think we can stop complaining about it right now and actually start doing something, which means getting out there. But, like, in that regard, you know, just getting out there and, like, talking to people and, like, actually doing networking things. I'm kind of introverted, so it's very difficult for me to, like, do be on social media and then get out there and, like, talk to people because I'm already exhausted from all the bullshit in social media. Can I say bullshit? Yes. You can say anything yes. you want. Okay. Fucking sweet. You can say anything um, you want, but I can't. There may be consequences. I don't know. That's fine. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Um, I, I can deal with consequences. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I can't do both, you know. It's too much. Um, but one of them is, I feel clearly more effective than the other. Um, because if you're on Facebook, per se, you're not just competing with every other idiot who's trying to like say something who's insightful that's really just passing on a meme, um, but you're also competing with the instrument that is Facebook. Facebook is there to market Facebook mm -hmm. yep. and market you to other companies that are trying to sell to you. So it's a very difficult thing to compete against because they're a giant machine and you are you. Mm -hmm. So you need a giant machine behind you before you can properly utilize Facebook. You yeah, because you would think Facebook would be great to promote. And so I've got like 1,600 friends or whatever. And I every time I post about a film or a play and blah, 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 you know, a month later, most of my friends are like, I never saw that. Where, where was that? Five people saw it. Yeah. yeah. It's always the same five people. That's a, that's a thing we <clears throat> talk about. Excuse me. <clears throat> that sounds are great. Are we coughing right now? Yeah, we're all, let's, let's get it all out. Cool. All right. Sean's got the coughing filter on He's again. Good for the so. 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and and Facebook is really, uh, it's really malicious because they got us all hooked on it. Because mm -hmm. once upon a time, it was a good tool yeah. for yeah. free promotion. And that was part of how they built themselves up. That's part, like probably we all remember course, like yeah. every, you know, musician, independent filmmaker, mm -hmm. writer, whoever, artist trying to like reach an audience is like, oh, I'm going to make a Facebook page. And that's a great free way for me to reach people mm -hmm. with all this content, right. videos and, you know, images and like links to my other stuff. And then Facebook slowly started choking that off mm -hmm. to the point where it's not that you can't have a free Facebook page to promote yourself anymore. It's just that it's completely ineffective unless yeah. you pay them. We've changed the cost to you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that. Yeah. Because I have like the Lisa Hammer page where I put all the stuff we're doing, but I don't have an individual page for maybe Sunshine, you know, things like that, because it's not worth it having to ask all my friends, can you like this page now? Like right. all day long, they're getting people to ask to like their page. And so it's just becoming just too much noise yeah it's a thing i've had to explain to social media clients um of different sorts i've i've said like yes you should have a facebook page just because you should have it. i'm not saying you lisa hammer should have one but like if i'm working for a nonprofit or some other project or something like sure we'll make you a facebook page so it's there it's another like place that people can go to mm -hmm. whatever but you're not going to be able to reach your audience through that. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Right. Yeah, you're just not. Like, that is not a way, you know, like, if you can make a Facebook group, that's a much more effect and get people into it. That's an effective way on Facebook to reach people. But a business page is like, 
bottom of the pile. It really is. Yeah, like, I mean, when we post to the Four Mile Circus page, like, Sean and I see it, and that's about it. Right. And I barely see posts from I see it, it and, and I liked yeah. your page. It, yeah. It's weird. I don't know why I'm not seeing stuff. Because they, unless we boost shit, they don't want you to see it. Exactly. And <sighs> even when we boost stuff, you probably haven't seen it. Right. Because yeah. they, they send you a click farm. You guys, what are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to do what Levi said, I think, yeah. actually, which is how through the social media... God, I just almost said revolution, but then I felt the vomit start mm. to <laughs> come up my throat. So I'm not going to say that again. Uh, but we've kind of come full circle of social yep. media was and and still is to a point mm -hmm. a good way to reach people and have conversations. But and I what you were saying, I was like, are are you a host of this podcast? Because this is ex <laughs> exactly what we say. We say all the time, like, you know, we're we're both introverts. Like we don't I don't like to go outside. I don't like to talk to more than like three people. And but I have to. Right. Like, I have, like, and I, I am still on social media, and I feel that some of the conversations I'm having on there are, are useful and good, but, again, to a point, and mm -hmm. part of that is, like, you need to step out of your home and talk to people face-to-face -face for a myriad of reasons, right. especially mm -hmm. right now. Um, and there are some people who don't have that option. If you're, like, isolated somewhere or you have mobility issues or whatever it is, it may be that social media needs to be a bigger piece. Mm -hmm. Of how you're networking, um, but if you have the option, however much you might not want to, right. to go face to face, that's why we did the artists in action thing in December, in part, you know, like that idea of like, okay, let's all get in a room together and actually talk with our mouths. Absolutely, you know? yeah, yeah. And also, wait, not when are you guys doing that next? <laughs> uh, we just we we a couple of us just hung out around the corner here again recently to oh. to have a conversation and. I mean, it was very loose. It wasn't quite as structured as that one, but it was It was a little bit more of like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, my God, the the um, inauguration's coming. What are you doing for that? And a couple of people are going down to D.C., and a couple of people are doing stuff locally, and so it was you know, it was sort of a touch base thing. I think we should do it again soon. But Yeah, sure. we'll let you guys yeah. know yeah. if you're yeah. interested. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, yeah, it was mellow, so... But we've had more, I think we've had more success recently with going out and networking and just doing a ground game and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And the, yeah. the social has become supplemental. Yeah. Right? yeah. And just reminders and, you know, oh, you need the information here. It's on this page. So yeah. you give yeah. a card or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, you know, there's a way to, if you have mobility issues, it's not like you can't use, you know, like you were saying, you can't use social media. You just have to understand its limitations. Like, yep. um, I deleted Facebook off of my phone, but I didn't delete. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I didn't delete Messenger, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. Messenger, you know, I can communicate with people that I know on Facebook through Messenger without having to sift through the, you know, feed. Sure. And, yeah. So it's like if I need to contact somebody, you know, I don't necessarily know everyone's email address, but I, they're on my Facebook. So you need to find so them on Facebook. I need to find them on, you know. Sure. And, they're, and they're responsive. They're more responsive on Facebook Messenger than they are through email. And then you do Hootsuite. I, I'm going to start doing that too, so you don't right. so you don't have to be on social media all day. You just do that one yeah. tweet of you know what, what's happening, and it goes everywhere. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while, I'll just check to see if there's a response, you know. Yeah. And then I only respond to that. Mm -hmm. I don't like sift through the feed so that I can like watch all of the, ugh, mm. the just brain draining and soul crushing, <laughs> you know, Facebook feed. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Facebook. I I go on Facebook like once a day. I like some stuff. And then I fuck off. Yeah. yeah. And then, or I do some of our stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. uh, other than that, um, Twitter, I'm like back to Twitter because that's what I liked the most before. And now, I mean, I still mostly just like retweet stuff and, and, and yeah. like, but it's just more my speed. My manager told me, she was like, she was like, you have to tweet something funny like three times a day. And I was like, all right. But I mean, I don't. Just tweet the phrase something funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Three, three times so a day. Who tweets good for? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. I've been having a lot of success just retweeting, and I don't have to think about anything. I just right. retweet yeah. stuff. You just sit there and you go, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And then everyone's like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm, retweet. I like your retweet. Yeah. When it comes to the politics stuff, I'm like, there are so many people <clears throat> saying things so much better than I'm sa than I would say it that I'm just like, fuck it. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. You're right, Mara Wilson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she she so often is. She's yeah. very often yeah, right. Yeah, mm. really. And I'm just like, who's it? Uh, she was the Matilda. 
Oh, okay. And she she wrote a memoir I want to read called Where Am I Now, mm. I believe. Was That's, she also the voice on The Incredibles? I think so. She's a writer, too. Right? She's yeah, a writer, writer yeah. Yeah, she's, yeah. Really yeah. smart. I like her. Wait. Look it up on social we'll look it media. Up on my phone. <laughs> Not on social yeah. media. Uh, Mara Wilson, if you would like to clarify all of these points up on our podcast, we would not say no. M A R A W I L. How do you spell Wilson? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I just asked like halfway through. I was like, oh, kind of yeah. like. Oh, you know what? Yeah. I, in fact, here, the stupid thing is I follow her um, <laughs> on Twitter. Shut up. She has a good Twitter feed. She does have a good Twitter feed. She lives in Queens. So do we. What? Yeah. Oh my God! You guys could be related. I know. Everyone named Wilson. We're gonna she, stop stalking. She kind of us. does look like somebody I would be related to, which is funny. She like if you, if any of you saw, me, all of you know what she looks like except for me. What, what, <laughs> but she looks kind of like my sister, like in a weird way. It's so funny. Yeah. I'm so. sure all the Wilsons are related, right? Yeah, that's how it works. It's like works. all the Smiths. Yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It's like it's like how you're related to Mr. Wilson from Dennis the Menace, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's got to be like your uncle or something. Yeah, like 18th removed or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Wilson, incidentally, is the most common family name in Scotland. I did not know that. Yes. You did not need to know that. No. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> trivia. <laughs> yes, but as as they pronounce it, it's probably more like Wilson. <laughs> <He's a, it's, laughs> well, she first. Yeah. It's Mick Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson Mick Wilson. Exactly. <laughs> Thank God we got to the bottom of that. <laughs> I think our work here is done. Yeah, it's a great so. episode. Can we we just, all learned something. Can we nap now? <laughs> I just want to nap. All I want to do is nap. <laughs> Naps are good. Mm. Oh, God. Naps so, are good. Do you guys make use of any of the other ones? Instagram or um, Snapchat? Snapchat. Oh, Periscope. God. Snapchat sucks. It's retarded. I can't stand it. Um, Periscope I did for a minute. That was fun. Like I shoved it out the roof of my car and like went over the bridge and then I was like, I'm done with that. You, uh, you literally use it as a Periscope. Yeah. 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 And then we, we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fun for like a minute and yay. But like, who cares? And then Instagram we do regularly. Yeah. But yeah. It's, 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 I mean, you have a cat, of course. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like you have the most cat. likes on cat my cat pictures yeah. yeah does that translate to anything though yeah she's <laughs> I don't pretty know. grumpy <laughs> oh honestly uh, when i when i look at our metrics and our numbers for like people clicking through to anything instagram's the most successful thing for us mm-hmm. like people go yeah. to your instagram pri- profile and will click yeah right, on the thing don't yeah. worry they'll wreck it through their algorithming and yeah. sponsored Something. posts I, I, I mean, mean facebook does but, own instagram right? but how yeah. do you yeah. turn yeah. how do you turn instagram numbers into business though like how what like yeah. it's i mean it, you know it's another way to just support your already fame yeah that's yeah right okay. you just got to get people to like what you're doing in exactly. the first place here's right. what it's good for you can convert likes into followers uh huh. And you can show those follow numbers and engagement numbers to people in meetings, and they smile and mm-hmm. think like, "Yes, you're doing uh, a thing right." Here's a check. There you go. There I you like go. that. They're like, "We want to see your social movement, your thought leader." Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you an influencer? Yeah, I mean, if they yes, combine, look at all the influence. If they yeah, combine exactly. your your um, YouTube, your Facebook, your Instagram, I'm, we're on Reverb Nation, all the band stuff. Oh yeah, Reverb you, Nation. And like, there's places that can combine all that and you're like you've got a huge huge numbers at that point when you combine everything that's mm-hmm. how it's helpful oh, largely yeah i mean it's it's helpful to reach the audience you already have right. you know if you're doing uh-huh. a social media campaign instagram can be useful if you're a nonprofit, instagram can be useful like mm. to a point it is a free way to be like right hey Here's a place you can throw your money. And if people are already inclined to throw your money or you put together a manipulative enough graphic that makes people feel like, oh, shit, I should give money or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Right. It has utility, but it's just limited. And it's right. a lot more useful if you already have that fame that you were talking exactly, about. Yeah. That I... It's not direct as far as, you know, right, right. numbers as far as sales and stuff. No. And, and it's Instagram just to build on. Yeah. yeah. And Instagram definitely, like, p- users on it definitely reward you for, like, not doing advertising stuff at least that's what it looks like to me because it like people like looking at pictures of like well some pets but also people Mm -hmm. like for us the most successful stuff we have is is we will you know do like a behind the scenes shot from like beneath the black moon which you both 
starred in. Mm-hmm. So anybody listening, if you if you want to see Lisa and Levi, Levi be just hilarious, watch uh, <laughs> Beneath the Black Moon available on YouTube and VHS. Yeah. Um, <laughs> For and, rental in Austin, Texas. Actually, I think it's in a couple other places. I think it's in For Illinois else? too. Yeah. If if you are stocking the Four Mile Circus Grindhouse double feature on VHS in your video store, let us know, and we will social media the shit out of it, which we've just established is not necessarily <laughs> useful for you, but we will do it. <laughs> but it'll be great. It'll be warm fuzzies for everybody. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, when we post like those behind the scenes stuff, like sometimes they just go like the numbers are like double anything else we'll post because there's a bunch of people and there's a bunch of people doing something yeah, exactly. and they're having fun and it's not even even the best picture it's just like oh hey i like i You're like film. A thing yeah, yeah. yeah. good yeah. for you yeah well, something happened um, so yeah big heart so yeah we should like pretend like we're making other stuff so that like we can take fake behind the scenes oh my god that's to promote the to promote the thing i actually oh. like this idea. Take, oh my god pause this so that no one else finds out about it yeah <laughs> turn off the recording instrument <laughs> oh, take yeah. a, a wait, podcast we're gonna do the same thing oh, wait, wait, let me put my hat on what's my hair doing <laughs> wait I, I left the house with wet hair. Is it like doing it's something? Sitting on your head. Yeah, you don't have. I don't trust your perspective. On yeah, this, I but... grew my hair out just so that I could. Wait, wait, not selfies of selfies. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Let me do it. <laughs> I like the light, the very harsh sunlight so hard. coming through. It's Amazing. Like... I know. Did you get the shot of him getting a shot? Oh yeah, it's all there. <laughs> Whoa, guys. Oh, Can I see yours? Meta. It's gonna be super meta, guys. Are you still recording? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> we just got a selfie of an, of us taking a selfie, and we're going to put it on Instagram right now. <laughs> I'm going to post our later. Exactly. This will be fall. It'll be the fall. Right. Oh, my God. Right, there we go. Fantastic. Hashtag podcast. Yeah. There you go. This yeah, is, does that this even, is... does that pop up anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, yeah. Actually, million podcast three. has 1.3 million public posts with hashtag podcast. The podcast hashtags are very, like, podcast, podcasting, podcaster, podcaster. and my favorite, wow. podcast life. Uh, is, that, is that one? I haven't been using that one. I should... Anything <laughs> life makes me want to slap yeah. the person yeah. across yeah. the... Literally Actor the life, set life. You yeah. know what? Those Shut life up. Is... <laughs> those, those ones are useful, though. We get... They, yeah. People, oh, people yeah. respond to them. That's a good point. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel my like, guts cringy. twisting yeah. a little bit every time I think of them. But, but... people... Oh. I feel a little bit better about putting all like the, the myriad of hashtags in, because you guys, you've seen mine. Like sometimes it's like, here's every single possible hashtag I can yeah. put in. Can you explain? Hashtag putting it in the first comment. Explain, mm-hmm. explain to people like me who maybe don't quite a hundred percent understand what happens with all that. Like, how, how does so, that help? Uh, basically, because uh, pe- people, surprisingly to me, uh, surf um, Instagram just looking for photos of stuff. Right. Whether it's because you know. They expect other people are doing that, so they're looking for other things that they're ha- that they're you know tagging the same way, and they go through and they like those, or they like people actually use the search function on Instagram, whether it's for like selfish reasons or because they actually do want to see, hey, who's making films? Like actually, sort of funny. I'm pretty sure it's the indie film hashtag, but Paul Haggis, the screenwriter, oh yeah, will yeah. or whoever is running his Instagram. Like I have no idea. He seems like he's established enough that he could have a person but like he will like stuff like he's not like some of my stuff and personal account stuff and he's like some of our four mile circus stuff that have been tagged indie film i don't think he's actually done oh, cool. anything other than go like click, so click, click, so click, people click. will click on a hashtag and then see all the posts in the yes, hashtag yes. yes and the, okay That's so whatever tag. their interest is if they click on if they type in that hashtag then they'll see a whole bunch of stuff that mm-hmm. has to do with that okay and then there there's a mix of usually it's first it's top posts and then it's the recent ones and the recent ones for like really popular hashtags churn really quickly okay. so um but uh the top posts most of the time except for the most popular ones you can break those top with only like a hundred likes or so huh. so because we've done that once or twice with some of them which then once you crack that it's sort of an exponential like then suddenly you have like 50 more just because you're in that top huh. um so yeah. it's yeah it's discoverability via hashtags is a lot more viable on instagram than any of the other platforms mm. like oh, wow. they just work better mm-hmm. there okay. than um twitter or obviously facebook because why should anything work on facebook we, if we ever tried to get like 
sponsorship or something from any of these places that we use, we're going to be so screwed because all we do is talk shit about how they're all terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but they're used to that. They probably acknowledge most of it. Mm-hmm. And we'd be like, look, what we're doing is like we're being real, man. Yeah, we're keeping it real. We're keeping it real so that like when we do tell people to use your system, like they know that we're not bullshitting them. Yeah. Exactly. They trust us because that's our trust. brand. Yeah. That's my brand that's my business meeting voice. Yeah. Hey man, like look, man, like <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg is currently crying in his cereal right now. Yeah. Oh totally. <laughs> He's like their podcast doesn't like my thing. Mm. Wiping his tears with hundred dollar bills. <laughs> 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 and he's got that special thousand double O's and O's with him. Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Social media and stuff. Do you guys want to play a game? Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Are you ready to play a game? Pin the what challenge. If I just said no. Yeah. What if I was like, you know what? Then well, it's then, too bad. My then things would take right a now. turn. Then, right. I, because... <laughs> then I'd make it the difficult game instead of the, <laughs> okay. the easy game. Are we, wrestling? Just, are we gonna play Twister? No. no. Uh, my apartment's not. I mean, um, it is big enough, or you got too much shit in here. Though? I mean, it's the perfect size for like obstacle course. Yeah, twister. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see what their apartment looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it looks Hasht- like a hoarder died. <laughs> uh, Hashtag Brooklyn life. <laughs> B K L N. What? <laughs> so we're gonna play. We can um, pretend you live in Bushwick so that it's really glamorous. It's, right. it's sort of close. Yeah. Bushwick adjacent. Close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's South Bushwick. Uh, adjacent. Southwick. You know, Southwick. <laughs> Bed-Stuy is right next to Bushwick, and I am on the border of bed The opposite border of bed but I'm on the border of bed <laughs> <laughs> So it's like I'm right, right on top of Bushwick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you guys like books? Yes. Uh, yeah, because we're, like, we're gonna play. We're gonna play. Sounds like you're not sure. <laughs> I watch the movies instead. <laughs> well, that'll like, make this even better, frankly. I like books, but I feel like I, yeah, I, yeah. Well, we, then this we, is gonna. We, we don't read enough. This yeah. is this is gonna be and neither why. And I have. I mean, the reason we're doing this game, Uncle Sean's literary trivia, <laughs> is because I have a degree in literature. Oh. So you want to? I don't us. really what? write. You want to? I don't you, really read. Though. You want to humiliate us? So. <laughs> uh, they're all multiple choice, so it should be oh. slightly easier. Phone a um, friend. So we'll do three questions. Did you say phone a friend. Oh. Phone a friend. And uh, the winner gets a pen that I have lying around somewhere. Excellent. Uh, do you have any oh, more pens you know lying what? around? Got, you gave away the I one. I got my pen. There you go. It <laughs> may or may not work. You could. You could it's win just a big pen lying. Weren't you gonna get some pens? I was at but deals, not, but I haven't yet. Yeah, you haven't done oh, it. I, I haven't gone to deals. Oh, you know about? Okay. I think my favorite thing about deals doing... deals is where we get our crafty for our film shoots. Right. <laughs> Everything's a dollar. That. That's what I'm saying. I just went to deals for the first time like two weeks ago and was I, I was there for um, a art department reasons, but they didn't actually have anything I needed for the film. But I was like, but they have everything else I need. And I had to stop myself because I'm like, I'm going to be walking around a lot yeah. to a lot of dollar stores today. I, I don't need to load up on deals right now for my home life Don't blow your watch. but it's tempting yeah. <laughs> it's tempting okay. tempting so so uh they're all multiple choice so wait until you hear all the all the choices uh and uh again yeah the winner of the of the three uh who gets the most right uh gets uh a pen okay well, where's paula so, poundstone when you need her <laughs> 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 so question one who is don quixote's companion a Dick Grayson, B, Sancho Panza, C, Tonto, or D, Pedro Almodovar? It's B, Sancho. Come on, Sean. What? We can actually answer that one. That's I'm like a start fair easy. question. You, you got to yes, humiliate B. us. B. B? Yeah. Yes. B? Okay, so everybody's got one point. It's B. Okay. Sancho Panza. <laughs> All right, so question two. In the Hanna-Barbera animated TV series version of Don Quixote, which Whoa. animals were the stars? <laughs> Shit, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Duck Quixote and Sandworm Panza. Mm-hmm. B, Don Katsoti and Sancho Porpoise. C, Don Coyote and, Sandro, and Sancho Panda. Or D, Donkey Quixote and Swanso Panza. They all sound equally viable. Yeah. At this point. All of um, all of the above. D. D. I'm going with C. You're gonna go with C, Don Coyote and Sancho Panza. I'm Panda. feeling C as well. Coyote feels like Yeah, the coyote is gonna, what sold what, it for yeah. me. I think it's C, but I'm gonna be different. So okay. D. 
you're going to go with D, yeah. Don, Donkey, Quixote, and Swanso Panza? <laughs> yeah. And the correct answer is C. <gasps> yep, I knew it. It's I the coyote. It. So, I Don Quixote. So, yeah, I was yeah. like Don. Ki- that was like that was the basis of this yeah. whole thing. Somebody <laughs> was like Don Coyote. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right, somebody so, get Mel Blanc. Yeah. So uh, Nicole and Levi are tied for yes. the lead. Angling for that pen, man. For the uh, for number three, which is Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol, is based on a book by which author? A. Alexander Dumas. <laughs> B. Frederick Nietzsche. Oh my God, that would be hilarious. C. I see that one. The Marquis de Sade. Oh, that would be even better. <laughs> or D. None of the above. D. <laughs> D. D for Dickens. D. D. The answer is D. None of the above. I really wanted it to be like <laughs> Nietzsche or something like that. I want it to be yeah. the Mar- Marquis de Sade. Wow, that would be amazing. That would be. That would be. It's like. Because this could be chains. our next project. Yeah. Because the ghost has changed. Marquis de Sade's Christmas Carol. Dude. The, the ghost of Christmas, you shit yourself. We need we need we need to put this on as a stage play. No, we're doing an epic film. That's yeah. what we're doing. Yep. We'll get we'll get we'll get funding for that. Not from people we want. Get like Pasolini Larry to direct Flint it. Will give us money for that. Get Pasolini to direct it. All right. Mar- Marquis de Sade's Christmas Carol. You guys think that I'm not gonna do this? <laughs> Why are you doing? It? Oh, I just found out that there's a uh, that there's a Mark Maron podcast where he interviews Werner Herzog. <laughs> yes, That's I listened to weird. it. Did you? Is it yeah. amazing? Um, it it was good. It wasn't maybe as amazing as you might. He's not narrating. <laughs> yeah, he's not narrating. No, he's you're just right. answering questions. I want to do the and... next episode as Werner Herzog. Okay. okay. Can I do but, this? Can we have to start episode? with this thing about chickens. Oh, That's my oh how stupid thing. they are! <laughs> chickens, you look into their faces <laughs> oh, and yes. you see, you see this <laughs> incredible stupidity. stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so stupid. <laughs> I'm just like it's this thing. I'm like, I agree. I hate, I, yeah, I hate chickens. chickens. I do. They. I love chickens. It's re- they're delicious. For dinner. I mean, they're I delicious. Love, yeah. I love that. But oh, there was a news article that just came out that said there is a. They were as smart as dolphins. Because they're they're chickens? dinosaurs. Yeah. Yeah, they they are. They do have personalities. Yeah. They yeah. do. I do not see what Werner Herzog sees when I look in the eye of, of a chicken. I, I don't think anyone could see what he sees <laughs> that's, through his eyes. It's true. Quite I feel like, like he feels that way about a lot of things. Everything. Though. Like, yeah, like, like, like the, the universe. Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh you've seen, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've seen. you've seen the thing where he gets shot, right? No. Where he's in an he's doing a TV interview. My eyes are wide, and he gets shot by like an air gun, like what? during this t- like I a regular see- TV news interview. This is from like a decade ago or something nice. like that. And during the interview, like like it was just some kid like around like shooting off an air gun and he gets shot and he goes like, Oh um and he's sort of touching <laughs> his his stomach for a second and he goes, I appear to have been shot <laughs> <laughs> and he just keeps going with the interview. He's like, "This is I don't know." <laughs> wow. Because in his own mind, he's like, "Of course I got shot. That's just life." The misery. Life is doing just... an interview, and then you get the, shot to the, the stomach. The misery of existence. Have you guys seen his really intense, like five minute long documentary about texting while driving? That was like a sponsored yeah. content oh, yeah. for like. <laughs> We just watched oh Lo and Behold on Netflix, which is about the history of the internet. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been meaning to watch that. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Well, before we get too far into Werner Herzog land, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. we way we, digress. We're, uh, we're Four Mile Circus. People can find us at uh, Four Mile Circus. That's the number four. The word mile, the word circus, whether that's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or dot com. Uh, and, uh, you know, we do this and we do some movie stuff and we do social media like things like like advice and consulting and crap i don't have anything good to and, um, uh, screw up this the... outro no yeah well with a pitch like that i don't know that it needs any help <laughs> <laughs> beautiful nobody needs any oh, help this is great yeah. let's do stuff oh sean so, you, you so... need a list of burn centers <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice <laughs> so where can they find you on <laughs> uh you can find me on twitter at uh at levi is evil yeah um that's my twitter that's also my instagram handle and i think that my facebook handle is just levi, levi. Well, it might be emerald buddha yeah. don't ask me about that one yeah but uh and then i have a facebook a long story i have a facebook page that's just the lisa hammer 
Yes. You, you made it for me. So no, but... your Facebook is the Lisa Hammer. Um, your Instagram is the Lisa Hammer. I think. Oh no, my Instagram. No, because your Twitter is Lady Lady Lisa Terror. Terror. Uh huh. And then Instagram, we have two. We have Radiana Music. Radiana Music. Yeah. Radiana, Radiana Music. Music. And the Lisa Hammer, I guess. Which and Radiana Music is literally just me retweeting anything that Lisa or I say on our regular Instagram or oh my God. <laughs> Twitter account. So you don't have to follow both of you. You right, just yeah, follow yeah. Radio Music. Yeah. yeah. Solid. Yeah. Talk about Circle Jerk. That's mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and speaking of Circle Jerks, we will uh, come back next time for a little bit more with Lisa and Levi <laughs> uh, here on the podcast. And, uh, hashtag just a tip. <laughs> hashtag goodbye. If you like what you heard, please subscribe on iTunes or your podcast platform of choice and check out other 4 Mile Circus services and projects at 4milecircus.com as well as 4 Mile Circus on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Watch our first VOD release, Nicole's award-winning feminist phone sex horror comedy, Small Talk, at 4milecircus.com store.